Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing a follow-up to the video that went out on Monday on this channel and that was how you can make Windows 10 look like Windows Vista. And I got a lot of comments on that video, a lot of suggestions from some of you guys uh, on some additional things that I can do to make Windows 10 look even more like Windows Vista. There were a couple of things that I forgot and uh, a lot of you guys pointed uh, some of those things out which I really appreciate. So thank you to all you guys who left a comment on that video. I have narrowed it down to five additional things that we're going to be doing in this video to make Windows 10 look even more like Windows Vista. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is focus on the taskbar and make some more modifications there because somehow I managed to forget uh, turning off combined taskbar buttons. These obviously were not a thing in Windows Vista and these are the buttons that you see here at the bottom of the screen uh, that are combined and you know they don't have a label, they're just the icon. This was a feature introduced with Windows 7. Obviously it was not in Windows Vista as I said. So to turn this off you can do that by going into the taskbar settings in Windows 10. There's no third party application or anything that you need. And on this menu you just want to scroll down to this area right here and change combined taskbar buttons to never and that will get rid of it. So you can see here we now have the full uh, button here where we have a label as well as an icon. The only thing that really gives it away is the fact that there is that indicator underneath the button. Obviously that was not a thing in Windows Vista and it was more of a pronounced the button with like rounded edges. It wasn't a flat uh, button that kind of blends in with the taskbar like we have here, but this definitely is one step closer to a Windows Vista look, so that's pretty awesome. Now, one thing we can also do is from within OpenShell, we'll open up the OpenShell uh, settings menu here, we can change the taskbar opacity to uh, make it look a little bit like kind of more like an arrow-ish theme. It's obviously not gonna be arrow, like full arrow glass transparency, but we can change it to maybe 50, and you can see that it will, uh, yeah, it look more like arrow glass, and we can move windows behind it, and yeah, it looks really, really nice. So you can do this, you can bring it, I mean, you could literally have it at zero and have it not even, like, have any opacity. But uh, I think maybe, I mean, it was at 85, this is what it was at, and that, honestly, like, what, when you set it to 100, that's what it looks like at 100. Uh, I didn't even realize that it was at 85 the entire time, because, um, yeah, you can't even see the, the window behind it. But we'll set it to maybe, let's do 65. I think that that looks pretty good. We'll, so we'll, we'll keep it at 65, but obviously you can modify this however you want. This was suggested by Walnut Spice, who is the person who suggested some of these ideas to me originally. So thank you to you once again. Um, but yeah, so that is another yeah pretty awesome thing that you can do. And it's just a quick little change here in OpenShell. Uh, but we're not done with the taskbar yet, and yes, we do want to save changes, because I did see a few people mentioning Quick Launch as well, which is not a thing by default in Windows 10. It was a thing in Windows Vista, and uh, obviously since like Windows Vista did not have the ability to pin uh, things to the taskbar like you have in Windows 7, and when, when Windows 7 basically changed how the taskbar works by allowing you to pin things to the taskbar itself rather than having a quick launch section over to the side. So if I were to close out of this window, uh, even though I had Explorer pinned to the taskbar with um, the combined buttons, it won't show up here anymore um, because that's just not how it behaves when you have this turned off. It just basically turns off taskbar pinning. But you can get the quick launch back if you wanted to, to have some pinned applications to your taskbar. And you can do that by adding a toolbar to your taskbar. So to do that, you just wanna right click, go to toolbars, and then new toolbar. And you wanna browse to this directory. I'm just gonna paste it in here. So percent user profile percent, which is a environment variable, which will uh, just point to your user profile folder. App data, roaming, Microsoft, Internet Explorer and Quick Launch. I'm already in the folder here, as you can see. So you want to select the folder and you'll see you have this new option for Quick Launch right here. So if we expand this, you see that we'll, we'll have Show Desktop and Switch Between Windows, which were options that are usually in Quick Launch by default and they still show up here. This toolbar just doesn't exist by default in Windows 10. Now, obviously it doesn't look like Quick Launch usually does. For one, it says Quick Launch here and then you've got labels for these two icons. Well, you can change that by right-clicking on the Quick Launch toolbar itself, uncheck Show Title, 
and then click on it or right click on it again and then uncheck show text. Then you just want to, oh, and you have to have the taskbar uh, unlocked for this you know, to actually work because if it's locked, it's just gonna stay here in place. So you have to unlock it. Then you can drag it over here so it's right next to the start button and then you want to just drag the rest of the taskbar right up to it uh, so that you've got the icons, you know, just like that. And then you can lock the taskbar and there you go. You might want to actually drag it a little bit closer uh, like this and we'll lock it. And uh, there we go. So yes, now we have show desktop and you can switch between windows, which uh, yeah, both of these were a thing in Windows Vista. And you can obviously pin things to here uh, if you want to. So if I wanted to pin Firefox, I just kind of drag it down here. Uh, and we're going to yeah move it to quick launch and now I will have to unlock the taskbar and kind of drag it out a little bit here and we can lock it again. There is this slider here you have to work with a little bit. Oh, let's see how that works. I think that looks pretty good. Next we're going to move on to uh, cursors and sounds. I got this suggested to me as well. I didn't cover this in the original video because the default cursor in Windows 10 is essentially the same as in Windows Vista. The difference is with the spinning circle animation that you'll see when you double click on something or when the computer's you know, busy loading something. You can still change it. So what I did is I copied over the Vista cursor itself from a Windows Vista virtual machine, and I did this with the Vista sounds as well. Now it's kind of the same story with the sounds. Windows 10 utilizes like the same startup sound as Windows Vista, which is disabled by default, but you can re-enable it. But if you really want to modify all of the sounds to exactly what they were in Windows Vista, all you have to do is copy the sounds from Windows Vista, and I'll show you how to do that. So if I swap over to my Windows Vista VM right here, I've got two folders opened up, C Windows media and C Windows cursors. So C Windows media, you'll just want to copy all of these over to your Windows 10 machine. And C Windows cursors, what you'll want to do is do a search for arrow, A-E-R-O, and then just select all of these because these are all of the arrow cursors and then copy them over to your Windows 10 uh, host computer or your virtual machine, whatever that you're doing this in. So we'll switch back to my Windows 10 machine here and I'll show you how to apply these. It's pretty simple. So you wanna open up the classic control panel and we'll do the cursors first. So just type in cursor and you wanna click on change how the mouse pointer looks. And you've got uh, different system schemes here, right? So what you can do is you're gonna have to modify each individual um, item in here, and then you can save it as a scheme so you don't have to like set them all back to the Vista ones if you wanna change it to the default Windows 10 ones or do another cursor scheme uh, that you might have. So I would recommend pasting these in the same folder. So open up C, uh, Windows Cursors, and then uh, you just want to, don't override any of these. I mean, you could, but uh, I wouldn't really recommend it. I'd just say paste this folder in here, move it to cursors and click continue. Then you can go through the process of changing each one of these. So we'll just do normal select and we'll go into Vista cursor and we'll change it. I mean, this really is not gonna be any different, but we'll just change it. Um, yeah, you can see, okay, it is slightly different. It's slightly flatter. You can see that this one here, it is a little bit flatter. Now there are two cursors that are in Windows 10 that are not a thing in Windows Vista. And I'll show you here if we go to the control panel in here, do a search for, if I can spell cursor correctly, um, we can see that there is no, uh, there's not those other two link selects for uh, location and people. Um, like there are here. So these will, you'll just have to leave as the default ones, but you can change most of them. So what we're gonna do is save this as, uh, we'll say Vista. So we'll save it as its own scheme. That way we can still swap back to Windows defaults if we want to. So here's a Windows default, here's Vista. So we'll apply. And it's basically the same thing with sounds. All you have to do is just do a search for sounds in control panel, change system sounds. It's the same scheme thing going on where you've got sound schemes so you can change all of them to the Vista ones and then save it as a scheme. Uh, I would recommend once again, copying these two 
uh, C Windows Media this time. Next up, we're gonna talk all about some additional programs. I've got two programs that we can install to uh, kind of achieve the look of Windows Vista a little bit better. And the first one is actually Windows Live Essentials 2012. So I'll have a link down below to a page on archive.org. Now, the main thing that we're interested in here is Photo Gallery and Movie Maker, since both of these programs did come with Windows Vista, but the version of Movie Maker was different. It looked similar to the Windows XP version of Movie Maker. This is going to install Windows Live Movie Maker, which was that one with that like storyboard uh, kind of timeline-ish thing that I didn't really like. But we can still install this here. We can install Messenger, Mail, and Writer. You can't use Messenger anymore unless you use the unofficial server hosted by the guys over at the Escargo project, which I did a video on how you can use their server and use use old versions of MSN Messenger in 2020 on Windows 10. And yes, this actually works and you can check it out in this video up in the cards. Uh, they do not support this version though. And there we go, guys, it has been installed. So we're gonna close out of this installer here. You know, we can use Windows Live Mail if we want to. So here it is. This was still called Windows Live Mail. Okay, so they still had Windows Live branding for some of this stuff. And we can also open up Live Writer. So there we go. Windows Live Writer was a kind of like a blogging tool. You know, you could use it to post to your WordPress site or a SharePoint site, or they support some other services as well. So uh, you have to, I believe you have to connect it. Okay, go to WordPress. Can we just, I think, I guess you have to connect it. Like it's not just like a word processor that you can use locally. And I'm not sure if you can even, you know, connect it to a WordPress blog anymore. You might be able to, maybe that'll be the topic for another video, trying to use like Windows Live programs in 2020. And the interface definitely looks more like a Windows Vista slash seven interface. Uh, this is not, uh, you know, there's no flat stuff going on. This is all, you know, the more rounded buttons here, more kind of pronounced buttons. And you've got the ribbon interface up here, though it does look, uh, yeah, it just has more of a Windows Vista design language going on. So there you go, guys. So we'll close out of that. And uh, so that's Windows Live Essentials. I'll just set the setup file over here. And the last program we're gonna take a look at is called WinFlip, which I just did a Google search for this. There are a couple of download links. Uh, I just downloaded it from Softpedia. This is a pretty old program. This was created uh, around the time Windows Vista was released because Windows Vista introduced this pretty cool uh, feature where you could, when you would press Windows key tab, it would uh, scroll through your windows in a 3D interface. It was really cool. Obviously, you could only really experience it if you had a pretty powerful computer. You know, you couldn't really do this on like a low spec system. Um, it was more of a of like an eye candy type feature. Well, WinFlip was created to allow people to kind of experience that feature on Windows XP so that they didn't have to buy Windows Vista to experience it. It obviously is not exactly the same. I mean, it's not gonna behave the exact same way, but it is pretty similar. And believe it or not, it still works on Windows 10, even though it has not been updated in years. So we'll open up uh, our downloads folder here. And I've got it right here, WFLIP 050. And you can see from the uh, date modified, uh, although this, oh, this is because I extracted it. it. It does come in this zip file here. If we go in the zip file, you can see that most of these files were modified in like 2007, 2008 timeframe. So it's been years since these file, like over 10 years since uh, this program was updated, but it still works on Windows 10. It's not something that you have to install. Uh, this is the, the full program right here. Uh, you just double click on WinFlip and it will start in your taskbar. So this is it right here, it is running right now. And you can access the interface by clicking on this. And you can see here it is right here. Or you can press Windows key tab. Now the problem is in Windows 10, Windows key tab will open up this interface right here. So what you can do is right click on the WinFlip icon in your taskbar, go to options and change the shortcut from Win tab to Alt tab. And this will just essentially replace your Alt tab menu to this here. Now the problem is you see we've got all of these like black windows here that aren't really like, this is nothing that's open that we can see. Uh, for whatever reason, it actually shows a couple of applications that are running in the background. If we open up the settings uh, window here, 
we can go to other and see we've got this list of current windows and we've got all of these windows like application frame window for settings, windows.ui.core.core window, uh, Microsoft text input application, Microsoft store, so and even Microsoft Edge. So these are all things that are running in the background, but uh, WinFlip thinks that they are like windows that we can see. And, uh, oh, I guess when you're inside of this settings panel, it just reverts back to the old uh, interface here. So we'll close out of this. And yeah, so it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine windows that are open that we can't actually see. They're just all programs running in the background. Although we just alt tab the Microsoft Edge and that opened up. We couldn't even see that it was Microsoft Edge. What you can do though is uh, add all of these applications to the exclusion list. Oh, it's still gonna show up. Okay, maybe that doesn't work. I thought that that would, uh, that that would work, but... Because, yeah, it shows all of these as running, and we just excluded them, but uh, apparently it doesn't actually do anything, which is unfortunate. Now, what you can do is, uh, to make it look a little more like Vista, is you can turn off the shortcut letters. These were the little letters that would show up. You can see that they're gone now. Uh, Vista did not have that, so you can turn that off and it looks a little bit nicer. So guys, those are uh, five additional modifications that you can do to make Windows 10 look even more like Windows Vista. Before we head out of here though, uh, I do have a couple of other programs that I wanna touch on very briefly. I saw both of these mentioned in the comments, and I'll kind of explain why I did not uh, showcase them. Number one was window blinds. I saw a lot of people mentioning window blinds, which is a Stardock program. And uh, you can absolutely use window blinds to skin Windows 10. In fact, I did a whole video on it just over a year ago. If you wanna go check it out, it'll be up in the cards. And window blinds is really cool. It makes it extremely easy to apply skins to uh, your Windows 10 interface. It is a paid program though. This costs, I believe, uh, yeah, $10 if you wanna buy. And that was WinFlip coming up. I don't know what that was about. We'll just close. Uh, okay, we're just going to quit out of it. <laughs> but um, yeah, this program costs money. It costs $10, or you can pay 30 bucks to get the entire object desktop suite. So I didn't include this because uh, the last video was really focused on just free modifications that you can do. Uh, though you can try this program for free for 30 days and see if you like it, and then you can choose to buy it afterwards. And uh, I think that window blinds is pretty cool. I've personally used uh, some of Stardock's free programs. I used to use Fences uh, many years ago, which I always really liked. Um, I used Bootskin and Logon Studio as well. But yeah, you can absolutely use window blinds. I'm sure there's a Windows Vista theme out there somewhere for it. Um, but you're just gonna have to pay $10 to get a license for it. Uh, the other program I saw a lot of people mentioning was Glass 8. So Glass 8, this is a program that brings back AeroGlass on Windows 8 and Windows 10. The problem is, this kind of relates to Windows 10 2004 again, uh, Windows 10 2004 breaks compatibility with this program. So you can see that they only have it for version 1703 to 1909, and then you've got 1607 down here. So if you were still running one of these versions of Windows 10, you could probably use this, but this was a program that I tried to use in that video that I said that I shelved, making Windows 10 look like Windows 7. And uh, this was one of the reasons why I ended up scrapping that video, because I wanted to get Arrow um, you know, air glass transparency back, and glass eight was a way to do it. But if we try to set this up here, you'll see what will happen. It will not work. So we'll just go through the setup here, and we'll install it to see air glass. That's fine. We'll choose Windows 10 acrylic design. And here we go right here. We get this error message right here. Your system version is not supported by this version of air glass. Continue anyway. You can hit retry. You can hit finish. You can restart the system. It will not, uh, work properly. But it is possible that the developers of Glass 8, uh, they could update their software to work with Windows 10 2004. It's definitely a possibility. But as of right now, unfortunately, it does not work with the newest version of Windows 10. And that's why I did not include it in the original video. I really wanted to, like, I really, really wanted to get AeroGlass, like proper AeroGlass transparency working. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's just not possible, at least with that program. But yeah, there you have it, guys. Those are five pretty easy, pretty simple ways that you can make Windows 10 look even more like Windows Vista. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. 
Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.